oh wow, you're spending five minutes personalizing every single outreach? I got this baffled question from a prospect recently. He suggested how non-scalable it was to do my cold outreach personally. And yet, despite this tremendous effort of five minutes per individual outreach, my business is making forty to $50,000 a month on a 70% margin. How is that possible? So today, we'll look at the numbers that you should be willing to invest to get a new client, both in terms of time and money. It's actually a very simple input and output question where you juxtapose the investment of time and money with the customer lifetime value a new client brings you. But most B2B consultants don't see it that way. They are too obsessed with scalability too early on, just like my prospect. And that's why they don't end up doing the activities that are the most likely to bring them new clients. So in today's video, I'm going to help you avoid that fate. And I'm going to be a very simple formula and framework that you can follow so that you know how much it's worth to invest into your client acquisition systems. So let's get started and I'll share my script because you will learn more if you listen and read at the same time. Before we get into the thick of it, we need to go over three core principles of client acquisition cost calculation that are important to adhere to in this context. Principle one, and that's the easiest to follow, is your permissible CAC, client acquisition cost, is a function of your LTV customer lifetime value. If a new client is worth $100,000 to you, so they have an LTV of 100K, you can afford to invest a much higher CAC, obviously, than if a client has an LTV of 10K. That is logical. Principle two, don't lie to yourself about how much your time is actually worth. That one is a bit trickier to follow because there's a lot of ego tied up in it. But the fact is, if you are making 10K a month and 2000 of it is the cost of doing business, your hour is currently worth $31. Okay, that's 10,000 minus 2,000 divided by 4.3 divided by 60 is $31, assuming a 60-hour work week, right? Which, of course, should be the default for a solo consultant or business owner who has a family. If you don't have a family, 80 hours. And so $31 per hour is a tough pill to swallow for B2B consultants who are used to charging $300 to $500 an hour as their billable rate. But to accurately calculate permissible client acquisition costs, we need to look at the facts and not engage in wishful thinking. If you occasionally charge $500 an hour, but de facto you are only making, if you average everything out over the time that you work, but you're only making, let's say, $10,000 a month, you are not worth $500 an hour. I mean, you can still charge it, and if people pay it, that's great, that's it. But it's not like you can fill your week with $500 hours. Right. So you have to look at how much your time is actually worth and not the billable rate. My own value per hour is $79 if I look at last year's numbers and 121 if I consider the last two months. But if someone wants to book me for an hour, I usually charge 500. So it's perfectly fine to live with this duality. You're willing to sell your time at one rate. Let's call it the billable rate, but your effective value per hour is a different rate. That's the real rate. That's fine. Make sure as you're calculating how much time you should be willing to invest into your client acquisition that you don't mix up these two rates. Principle three, see your business growth like stages in a rocket ship flight. We need to make sure that the client acquisition setup we have devised is able to carry us to the next stage. For example, I'm right now going from the stage of 30K a month to 100K a month. The setup I have needs to be able to carry me to 100K months. It cannot start falling apart at the halfway point. It cannot require me to pull, you know, crazy 100 hour weeks. It needs to be sustainable, even if it means that I work a lot. Once I have reached that new stage, I will need to redesign my client acquisition system to help me get to the stage after that. And how do we define what these stages are? It can be defined pretty objectively. For anyone living in the West with Western cost of living and doing business, we're roughly looking at stage one being the transition from zero to 10K a month. At 10K a month, most people are able to cover their life expenses, but they're living hand to mouth and you cannot really invest much into the business and you aren't adding to your net worth at that stage. Stage two is getting to $30,000 a month. At that level, you can afford to insert scalability into the system. You hire a few people, either full-time or freelance basis, and you're able to invest a considerable amount into client acquisition. And your personal living circumstances don't change. You're not moving into that mansion just yet. And at that level, you're still effectively a one-person band with some help. Stage three, however, is then going from 30K to 100K a month. Now you're turning that one person ban into a proper business. You're building a machine that makes you money. And at that level, you can hire very qualified people and you can start withdrawing from client delivery and mainly being a high level liaison between the business and your clients. And there's, of course, stages beyond that. But for the time being, this is enough. Okay, so with these three principles in mind, 
what should be your CAC, your client acquisition cost? So I'll start with mine, and that'll show you some of the principles of how we go about this. And then we will look at some of my clients' examples. So right now, I have four ways of closing clients in a predictable way. And they vary in terms of how much personalization I inject into my cold outreach. The highest level of personalization looks like this. I record 50 personalized videos and my virtual assistants send them to prospects. From these 50 videos, I book three sales calls of which I close one and my customer lifetime value is about $10,000. I'm able to record 50 personalized videos in about six hours time. At this level, let's call it level one, my CAC looks like this. So recording 50 personalized videos takes me about six hours of my time. As per principle two, my hour at 30K revenue per month is $79. So that's six times 79. The cost is 474. Then I have to do three hours of sales calls, including some follow up in between. So let's generously say that's another six hours. So that's another 474. Then I have to pay my virtual assistants to send those emails, which comes down to roughly a dollar per email, including follow ups. So that cost is $50. And I have to buy leads, which costs maybe 20 cents per lead. So for 50 leads, that's about $10. So there's a total of well, almost exactly a thousand dollars and my average lifetime value, customer lifetime value is 10,000. So that's a really nice 10 X LTV to CAC ratio. I'm making 10 times as much from a client as I uh, pay to get them. Now, if we look at my lowest form of personalizing the outreach, namely where my virtual assistants do some paint by numbers personalization on my behalf, the numbers look like this. We send emails to 1000 people. We get eight sales calls out of that and I close one out of them. In this case, the CAC is considerably worse, of course. It's about $2,500. So a four times LTV to CAC ratio, but that's still acceptable because it requires less of my time and requires more money. And money is more abundant than time. So overall, I want to keep my CAC at 25% of revenue maximum. And right now we're seeing around 20%, which is fine. Cool. So that was me. But let's take a look at another B2B consulting scenario. And the difference here will become quite apparent here. So for example, one of our clients, he's very early stage, he's a fractional CFO. And so he doesn't have clients yet. A realistic lifetime value for him would be $36,000, right? That should be what one of his clients brings him over the lifetime of working with him. Why? Because uh, our client, he plans to charge $3,000 a month. And we can safely assume that a client once closed, would stay with him for a year on average. Some would stay for three years, some maybe only for three months if they're not a fit. So 12 months is a good average assumption. Now, one of the challenges that uh, our client is facing is that he needs to research the leads that he scrapes because he wants to make sure that the company he approaches doesn't have a full-time CFO yet. That would be quite silly, right? Approaching a company that has a CFO and uh, offer them fractional CFO services. Now, that is a process that disqualifying that now takes him about five minutes per finished lead. So he can get 12 leads per hour and it takes about three times as many leads as that to sift through. So he starts with 36 leads, takes him an hour to go through them to find 12 useful ones. 36 leads to get them in the first place costs for him about 50 cents each because he doesn't have the economies of scale that I have. So that's $18 and one hour of his time to arrive at 12 useful leads. Okay. And so at this point with what he's doing, we're seeing a 2% call booking rate. This means he has to record 50 personalized videos in order to book one call. And he's early in the journey. So rec recording one video takes him maybe 10 minutes. So which takes into account false starts and generally an underdeveloped and not streamlined process yet. So early stage. So he's making six videos per hour and will also assume a very modest 10% close rate once he gets somebody on a call. Okay. So he gets books 10 sales calls, he will close one of them because he doesn't have much experience selling yet. And so this means that we're looking at the following numbers. Let's work backwards. He needs to do 10 sales calls to close one deal. 10 sales calls will take him, including follow-ups, about 20 hours. So 20 hours to conduct 10 sales calls. In order to get 10 sales calls, he needs to send 500 personalized videos. Now, what is the cost to send 500 personalized videos? First, scraping. We said that one lead costs him 50 cents. So the cost for 500 is $250. Then filtering, we said that he can find 12 leads in one hour. So in order to get to find 500 leads, he needs to spend 500 divided by 12, which is 42 hours. Then recording the videos, he currently spends 10 minutes recording one video. That number will go down over time, but just for the sake of the argument, let's keep assuming 10 minutes, you know, worst case scenario. That is six videos per hour, 500 
that he needs to record divided by six is 83 hours to record 500 videos. And then sending, sending is quite quick. You can easily send one email per minute. So sending 500 emails is 500 minutes, which is eight hours. Sales calls, we assume that it takes 20 hours to conduct 10 sales calls uh, with all the follow-ups and timing coordination and so on. Let's also assume that he will have to do five follow-up sales calls before he closes one of them. So let's say sales calls will take a total of 30 hours. So that's our total cost, $250 for leads, 42 hours for filtering, 83 hours for recording, eight hours for sending, and 30 hours to do sales calls and follow-ups. So that is $250 and 163 hours. He can also outsource the filtering and sending to someone who gets paid $7.50 an hour, which would mean then $250 for leads, $375 for filtering and sending. That means he can save himself that time. It would be then 113 hours for recording videos and sales calls and conducting sales calls. That's a cost of $625 plus two weeks of work, 113 hours, approximately 60 hour weeks, which is uh, should be the standard. Now, remember, he's currently making zero, okay? He's not having any revenues. He doesn't have any revenue. So his time is not very valuable at this point. And if I told you to work two weeks, at the end of which you will have a $36,000 client, 3,000 a month, would you do it? Right? I don't know many people who, who make zero who would say no to this. You can make a 3K a month client if you work for two weeks and pay 625 bucks. At $3,000 a month retainer, he needs to dedicate about one day a week to a client. So he's early days. So his possible revenue will be maxed out at about $15,000 a month. At 15K a month, even if we assume he has zero cost, his hour would be worth $58, right? So we're dividing 15K a month divided by 4.3 divided by 60. He gets to 50, 58 per hour. Right now, his time is worth zero, as we said. And even at his future max earning potential, the time he would spend to get one client would be 113 hours times 58, which is $6,500, which compared to a $36,000 revenue is still very moderate. That's an 18.2% CAC. So I know it sounds like a lot, these 113 hours, you know, 625 bucks is not the big deal, but the 113 hours, like two weeks of full time hustling. So on, but it's only two weeks. You will then get a 3K a month client. And if you do all of it yourself, you literally only have to spend the time working, but you don't have to do much. You only have to spend that time working, but after two weeks, you have a client. Okay. So I keep reinforcing that because it's not that bad when you put it into this context. I'm not saying if you're right now a consultant who makes whatever 20, 30, 40K a month, that you should be doing the same kind of effort. You need to find a client acquisition method that does not take you as much time. Or at least even if you do something like this called outreach, you will then still have to find a way how to scale this quickly because you cannot be spending, you know, 113 hours to get one client. Client, you then have to effectively then pay for it. But that is a totally acceptable client acquisition cost. If you could pay someone to do this video recordings for you, and it would have the same, roughly the same effect, that is an absolutely decent cost to spend client acquisition cost. Remember, my average CAC is 20%. Now, finally, let's look at a more extreme example. I once worked with a consultant who serves private equity companies, and we ran a test campaign where we researched each lead for about 30 minutes before custom crafting an email to them. Overall, it took about one hour per lead to send one email. Now, I charged my client $5,000 for this exercise, and I worked about 100 hours on the whole thing, which is about a $50 hourly rate. I wouldn't do such a deal today anymore, but at the time, my time was less valuable, and I wanted to see what kind of numbers we could get with such a hard-to-get crowd. Partners in private equity firms are extremely difficult to approach, so it was a worthwhile investment on my side as well. And the numbers we got were quite encouraging. Out of 100 people approached, we booked five calls, None of them closed, but at least two of them are now good contacts that are likely to become clients at a later stage. You know, it's part of the whole networking game in this industry. Now my client has a system built and several solid email templates so he could repeat this exercise at a much lower cost and approach another 100 prospects. Imagine if he just approached another 100 people, he would get another five calls probably, and two of them could become clients. The more he does it, the faster he will get a conversion out of this. You know, even if he had to repeat the exercise three times and approach a total of 400 people to book one client, it still would be massively worth it. Why? Because his customer LTV is well over a quarter million dollars. 
Okay, he does due diligence consulting for PE firms who want to acquire a target company. And his starting package is well into six figures. So if he spends four times 5,000, which is what he paid me in this case, and he would get somebody like me to do this. So he would have to spend four times $5,000, which is 20,000. And let's say 50 hours of his own time to proof check the occasional email and run sales calls. So that's $20,000 and 50 hours. His de facto hour is maybe worth $100. Remember, we're distinguishing billable hour versus real hour. So there would be $25,000 spent to get a client worth 250K. 25K spent, client worth 250K. A very, very good deal. It's a 10% CAC or 10x LTV to CAC ratio. Really, really good deal. So that's the whole point here. Customizing and personalizing your outreach is absolutely worth your time. Yes, even your time as a consultant or business owner yourself, if you see it as a simple math exercise in terms of input versus output. And so my prospect who I mentioned early on, he was surprised that I'm spending five minutes customizing each outreach. Well, I mean, if I can spend six hours on customizing my outreach, I conduct three sales calls and I book a client worth 10K, then here's where I will be maxing out with this method. Assuming I need to spend 10 hours a week serving existing clients and 10 hours with admin for my business. That's quite, those are quite realistic assumptions. I have 40 hours per week left. Half of that time I can spend creating personalized videos. I have 20 hours per week that I can spend personalized videos. In that time, I can produce 160 videos, which will bring me three clients a week. Remember, I'm closing one out of 50 people I approach. At three clients a week, I'm closing 13 clients a month, which at a 10K lifetime value means 130,000 in monthly revenue. So that is where this current method is maxing me out. And remember that third principle, we want to go from stage one to stage two to stage three. My next stage, kind of the next threshold, the next frontier for me is 100,000. And so that is all I need to do in order to close those 130K. So just produce 160 videos per week those will bring me three clients a week and I'm going to make 130K in monthly revenue. And once I reach that point, then I will need to look for ways to remove myself completely from the process. Then principle three will come in. I will have reached stage of my business and will now need to scale beyond that. Okay. Next stage in the rocket ship. At that point, I'll probably start running ads or not. And I will keep pocketing 1 million at profit per year and do that for the next decade. That's also a possibility. But the key point here is test what works for you, to what degree you need to personalize your outreach to get to a point of predictability of client acquisition, and then scale that approach to the absolute maximum.